As the penal laws were relaxed enough to permit some political activity, Daniel O'Connell organized the Irish to press for their complete repeal. This finally happened in 1829, an historic event known as the Catholic Emancipation. Economically, the Irish remained very poor, however. Writing in the 1830s, Gustave de Beaumont said, I have seen the Indian in his forests and the Negro in his chains, and thought, as I contemplated their pitiable condition, that I saw the very extreme of human wretchedness. But I did not then know the condition of unfortunate Ireland. This was not mere exaggeration for effect. The average slave in the United States had a life expectancy of 36 years. The average Irish peasant, 19. The Irish peasants ate mostly potatoes and occasionally fish, and many families never saw meat from one year to the next. Slaves in the United States ate a wide variety of coarse foods, including low grades of meat and poultry. The Irish lived in mud huts with thatched roofs, and usually no ventilation except the doorway. Slaves lived in log cabins with windows. In the United States, slaves built roaring wood fires in their cabins, but in deforested Ireland, the Irish poor burned turfs from the bogs. It was considered an unusually cruel slave owner who did not provide mattresses for slaves, but beds were rare among the Irish poor who slept in piles of straw. When the slaves were freed, they were destitute by American standards, but not as poor as the Irish peasants, according to W.E.B. Dubois. In short, Irish poverty was unique, and neither the model nor the imitation can be found anywhere else. The Irish peasant wore rags handed down from generation to generation. Often this clothing was not new, even when originally purchased, for there was a flourishing market in second-hand clothing, much of which was imported in bulk from the cast-off clothing dealers in London. According to a contemporary account, the more fortunate of the Irish eat potatoes three times a day, others less fortunate twice, those in a state of indigence only once, there are some still more destitute who remain one or even two days without the slightest nourishment. Moreover, it was a poverty in stark contrast with the wealth of foreign landowners, with virtually no middle class in between. The low standards of living in Ireland in the 1830s were merely a prelude to the catastrophes of the 1840s, when the potato blight spread across the country, destroying the principal food of the poor and creating a massive famine. About a million people died of starvation and diseases related to it, and closer to two million emigrated from the mid-1840s to the mid-1850s. Ireland was one of the rare examples of a country declining in population for generations. The historic injustices done to the Irish by the British, some condemned even by such a British patriot as Winston Churchill, cannot automatically be assumed to be the reason for Irish poverty without confusing morality with causation. Ireland was poor and fragmented before the British arrived, and long after achieving independence has remained one of the poorer nations of Western Europe. Moreover, the Irish as a people have languished in poverty for generations after immigrating to other countries, even when, as in the United States, they ultimately advanced to prosperity. The soil and climate of Ireland would not explain its poverty. A higher proportion of the land of Ireland than of England was cultivated and was of greater natural fertility. A group of German farmers who settled in Ireland in the 17th century were, by the 18th century, better fed, clothed, and housed than the Irish peasants. These German farmers were, by contemporary accounts, industrious and remarkable for the goodness and cleanliness of their houses. In all these respects, they differed from the indigenous Irish. Arthur Young's travels through 18th century Dublin convinced him that the Irish there had no idea of English cleanliness, either in apartments, person, or cookery. In Ireland, in England, and in the United States, the Irish kept pigs, chickens, and other creatures living in their homes, even in urban communities. The 18th century Irish were described as lazy at work, but spiritedly active at play. Initiative was undermined by laws which made a tenant's improvements the property of the landlord, who could then raise the rent because the property was more valuable. Neither education nor entrepreneurship